This is the video where we're going to look at the 4G63. Quite a few of our members have the 4G63 in various iterations of the Mitsubishi Evolution and other versions of the Mitsubishi. So the 4G63 first appeared way back in 1981 in the Mitsubishi Lancer EX2000 Turbo. An interesting version appeared in 1993 in the Mitsubishi Evolution, and that ran to about 2007, 2008. And it's been used in quite a few Mitsubishis over the years. The Kanta, the Cordia, the Delica, Delica, however you want to pronounce it, the Eclipse, the Galant, the Lancer Evolution, the Pajero, the RVR, the Starion, the Tredia, the Airtrek, the Dion, and the brilliant BS6, which takes us right up to about 2010. So long production run. There's some everyday cars that this engine was used in, but there were some real high performance tuned variants as well. So 1980 to 88 was the first version, the 4G63. It was a single overhead cam, two litre displacement, four cylinder engine. So that's a characteristic that carries on with a lot of other iterations of this engine. And it produced up to 135 horsepower. The intake ports were relatively small, typically round in shape, whereas the exhaust ports were larger and a sort of rectangular shape. From 88 to 2007, there was a turbocharged version, so this would have the 4G63T designation. This boasted a dual overhead cam, which really allowed much more control over the opening and closing of those valves. And the head on those engines generally featured an integrated exhaust manifold as well. The Evolution models produced from 1992 to 2007 featured the double overhead cam version with 16 valves. The turbocharger and the intercooler were larger, which you would expect it was pushing out a lot more power. And the intake and the exhaust ports were really quite nicely designed to just optimize airflow in and out of the head. So these typically supported power figures in the region of 300 horsepower. From 1996 to 2002, we had the GDI, the, the gasoline direct injection. So this was a revision really to meet emissions regulations where the fuel was direct directly injected into the engine cylinders rather than to the intake port. This produced around 250 horsepower and was typically fitted to the Mitsubishi Galant VR4. But again, we see improvements that take the intake and the exhaust ports to the next level, just aiding the airflow. Um, primarily that was done for economy, but there are some performance benefits to that design as well. The version of the engine from 1992 onwards featured MIVEC, that was Mitsubishi's variable valve timing and electronic lift control which really took those cam profiles and extended the durations and the lift that you would get depending on what the engine was doing, which was good for fuel economy, but also enabled you to optimize power and performance at certain RPM points. That came as both a single overhead cam and a double overhead cam, but we're really starting to see lots of technology going into the 4G63 engine. It was a Mitsubishi space runner, so that was known as the RVR in some markets, and that ran from 1991 to 1997, which featured a very similar version of the 4G63 engine with a single overhead cam and that produced about 170 horsepower. So you can see that over the years there have been quite a few revisions to the block design. Most of that work has actually gone on in the head itself. So swapping heads around is a common project that people do on these engines. So if you had one of the lower powered variants, it's often better to get the better flowing characteristics from one of the more recent heads. Obviously you've got to do other mods to support that, but it can be more cost effective to go out and buy a ready-made optimized head than to take one of those older heads in and get it properly flowed. So the main difference really is the port sizes within the head. The 4G63 engine was very, very smooth running, so it was nicely balanced from the factory. They were quite fastidious in the components they put into these engines, but there was a dual balancing shaft module as well, which further reduced the vibrations that you would get from each cycle of the engine. So with the 4G63, it's fair to say that each new generation and iteration of the engine was better than its predecessor. So if you're looking for upgrade parts, try and source it from a donor engine that is as recent and as new as possible. So from 1996, in cars like the Mitsubishi Evo 4, the TD05 turbo was used. It was a twin scroll setup, so it was optimized to really spool up very, very quickly at those lower RPM figures. And it worked really well and offers a decent amount of flexibility for the tuner. We see those turbos supporting power figures of about 400 horsepower. So can you convert the naturally aspirated 4G63 and make a 4G63T? Well, you can. They do share a lot of components, but a lot of things are different 
and it requires a lot of work. So if you really wanted a turbocharged version of the 4G63 engine and you've got the 4G63, I would strongly recommend that you look at a transplant option that comes with the complete engine assembly, the ECU. It makes life a lot easier to just transplant the engines and thankfully the mounts and everything else in the engine bay is pretty much the same between the two different types of engine. So you can really cut corners and save a lot of time just by sourcing a donor engine rather than messing around with the internals, stripping down the engine and trying to make a turbo version of the 4G63. If you're doing a turbo swap, we'd also recommend because you're unbolting stuff from the engine and the old parts get quite brittle, that you upgrade the hoses, the connectors and the intercooler itself. Because by the time you've removed these and put the old ones back on, they're likely to just split or you're going to have problems in the future. So just source a decent set of alternatives. The silicon options, there's hard pipe kits that you can get as well. But just make sure that you don't skimp on that aspect of upgrading your project. If you've invested in a turbo, you really should be investing in the rest of the setup around the turbo and around the engine and just make sure that nothing is going to fail on your debut outing. So I hope this has been an interesting overview of the 4G63. We've got more in-depth videos coming up on this wonderful engine particularly as it was fitted to the Mitsubishi Evolution and there was quite a few different iterations of the Mitsubishi Evolution. We'd love you to subscribe if you haven't done so and please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.